Lisa Meaches. I'm the president of Eagle Vision. Can you tell me how you first got interested in filmmaking? Well, I knew from a very young, young age that I was going to be a storyteller. Um, I was always, being the youngest of, of uh, six kids in the family and the only girl, you're always, you know, you have to find inventive ways of getting your voice heard and, and your thoughts known, right? So I was, you know, always competing with my older brothers for attention, whether it be just, you know, wanting to go for a walk or wanting someone to read for me, you know, and, um, so I knew then that I had to find inventive ways of just getting my voice out. And so I was very fortunate to have, um, a family that was very attentive to all ages in, in our family and coming from a traditional family that really values life. They really take the youngest and really mold that, that person and the value system that we were raised with. Um, we were always told that no matter how young and, and or or how old you are, that everyone has a place in in each family circle. So my voice was just as powerful as the eldest of of my siblings. So I was very fortunate to be able to be inventive with you know getting my voice seen and heard. Um, was it difficult to get your start in filmmaking? You know, in terms of finding mentors or finding people to help you out to help you sort of get that first step? I think so. Uh, I started off in the newsroom. And so being in the newsroom, you have to fight for your airtime on, you know, you, you're hoping for the first 10 minutes, right? But uh, I was fortunate enough to have a, a news director that allowed me to go out there and really look for the stories that I wanted to tell. And it happened to be the year that the United Nations called for a salute to Indigenous people. So people wanted to hear what I had to say in, in our newsroom and what my thought process was and my worldview and my ideology. So I, I was able to really get my stories out there. And um, I was also able to tell stories from other nations' perspectives, uh, what it was like being in Brandon, because we started off in Brandon at CKX. And um, and then, which is how I got started with Sharing Circle, we were doing a vignette series called A Salute to Indigenous People for the Friday afternoon newscast. And I would go live from a First Nation community in the area discussing and profiling stories from that distinct nation. And um, people liked what they saw, so... You know, the next year I was doing a half hour format and it was called a sharing circle. And then I produced it with my grandfather, who is a her trained herbalist. Um, he's also a pipe carrier and a, a knowledge keeper. So I always had kind of like the Jiminy Cricket, you know, beside me, you know, expressing and, and guiding me as to what I should be doing to empower Aboriginal people so that um, we were understood and, and respected in a different way than how media was portraying us at that time. So I took a lot of risks in the types of stories that I was telling, but also profiling the relationship that Aboriginal people had with non-Aboriginal folks in the community. And that seemed to, you know, people really like that. So you have to be inventive in your storytelling technique and the way the story is done, how the story is done, who the story is done with and ensuring that everyone took ownership of, of um, the relationship that was taking place. And it was a very unique time for that relationship in the, in the Westman area. Uh, when you started Eagle Vision, uh, were there many um, Aboriginal producers or Aboriginal production companies? No. Um, I rely, I rely very heavily on the gifts of other nations, although my stories come from a very distinct Aboriginal um, direction. I still rely on the gifts of other nations that are out there. I have Noah Ehrenberg, who is Jewish. I have Kim Bell, who's Ukrainian. You know, everyone comes from different, distinct backgrounds. And so, you know, and, and it's the, the training that we, um, that, you know, happens within the building itself, they come from all different nations as well. Like we don't, we tell Aboriginal stories, but we tell all stories at the same time. We train Aboriginal people, but we also train all people. You know, it's, um, I've learned to to take the blinders off as I walk, whereas one time I, I didn't. You know, I was 100% Aboriginal owned and, you know, blah, 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 pro-Indian. And, you know, I, I realized now that that was a very um, arrogant ideology and mindset and grew as a business person as a result. But during that time, there weren't a lot of, you know, maybe one or two people across the country. It's still like that. 
I just happened to be that one or two person, you know, like in, in the company side of things, you know, kind of doing things at the level that we're working on now. And my success is just an inkling of, you know, if, if you were to, if you had a scale of, of uh, successful independent producers, my success is just, uh, you know, a, a smidgen compared to my non-Indian colleagues. And that's fine. I mean, I, my goal is not to be, you know, not to get so big that the heart is, the fall is harder. My goal is to just stay at a, a very comfortable pace and to be able to give back to the community. You know, you can do well and, and do the projects that you really love, the passion pieces, the passion documentaries and, and projects. But unless you're giving back, which is part of our mindset as Aboriginal people, is to be able to give back and, and to really, you know, look forward to giving back, wanting to really, you know, give back to your people. That's really important for us. And it was important for me. And although I had that, you know, I, I, I'm deemed one of the more successful Aboriginal producers. If we don't give back, it's, we, we've compromised something that is very ancestral to us. And I can't do that. You know, there were many times where, for, for Banff, for example, when I go to the Banff Television Festival, I know I'm the only Aboriginal person there many times, you know, many, for many years that I've been going. And it's sad. That means that I haven't been doing my part you know, and giving back to my people because there are no producers here that are Aboriginal. So I've almost, I've become neglectful as a mother, as a nurturer, as a stakeholder in my community. So unless I start bringing more people with me, then, you know, I, I need to continue doing that for me to, to really feel like I'm successful. Are, are there any stumbling blocks you see right now in terms of getting more Aboriginal people involved in filmmaking? Like, are there enough programs and encouragement out there in general? I don't think it, I don't think it's the programs. I think, you know, people and, and organizations like the NSI stepping up to the plate, that's exactly, you know, they saw the gap. They wanted to fill the gap. How do we train Aboriginal people? Because we're playing catch up in every industry, not just broadcasting. And that's not by our own doing. We didn't ask to be victims. But in order for us to expedite where we need to be as a people in this industry, I need the help of my colleagues. I need the industry to, to be ready to embrace Aboriginal people. And I'm not saying we need handouts. What I'm saying is that, you know, it's, it's the old uh, philosophy. You can teach someone how to fish or you can continue giving them the fish to feed them every week. And I think uh, we're very practical people. If you show us and introduce us, we have no problem showing you what we can do too. And it's the same thing with, with storytelling. We are storytellers. We've always been. And, you know, this is a new medium that we're talking about now, and, and we're ready to learn. But is the industry ready to embrace us? You know, and I think we need, need to look at the networks or the networks. Do we, do we see that reflection on the network, on the 6 o'clock news, on, you know, in, in prime time? You know, do we see it? And I think that answers the question. We're not where we need to be. So it's more mentorship and encouragement and opportunities to have work shown. I think it's um, many aspects. It's many aspects. I think it's the, the broadcasters need to step up to the plate and really make it a mandate. Um, I believe that funding bodies need to make it a mandate. And I think that programs like NSI need to be, be duplicated in different organizations. You know, we're not, we're not done yet. You know, when you have yet to walk on any film set and see one or two of us working, you still don't, you know. So it's, um, we're still not where we need to be.